NC signing off for the SR9. Highly recommend this gun. here holding an excellent backpack. This is a Camelback Alpine Explorer backpack. No, I'm not going to review this one yet, but I'm going to use it to introduce a concept and the subject of this video. You just saw some of our adventures we've had together at the Nut and Fancy Project or TMP. Thanks so much for coming along. And yeah, I get out to areas like the deserts, like the high mountain areas, and other places all over the United States as best as I can when my time and schedule allows to test gear just like this. I recommend you do the same. Get out there, use the stuff you guys got, learn about it, learn your systems, improve your systems, make some good memories with your families and friends. However, that's not really the subject of this video. This one is going to take a little bit more of a serious tone. And that is, what if you're out there and you get hurt while you're doing your adventuring? And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It will happen. Someone in your party or yourself is going to get hurt when you're out in the mountains, out in the desert, out in the swamps. And I am a big advocate of being prepared for just such a contingency. If you guys have been watching the Nut and Fancy Project, project that should come as no surprise. Uh, yeah, I think it's up to us to be self-reliant in all situations, especially when, we're at, when we are out in very remote areas far away from anybody that can get to us quickly. I'm going to talk about first aid in this video. And actually, I'm going to break it into two parts. Um, in other words, two different types of first aid kits. And this is just me. This is nothing fancy talking. And this is the way I look at it. I'm going to call the first one a level one kit. And the second type of kit is a level two kit. A level one kit is what I'm going to address in this video. And we're going to talk about... Um, minor to medium first aid emergencies, which this kit, uh, focusing on the mobility side of the equation, is going to address. The level two kit is actually, the I call it a brigade level first aid kit. It's going to be bigger, more capable, more able to handle uh, bigger bleeding emergencies and other things that you might encounter, especially if you're in a group situation. So let's get going. This is a store-bought medical kit and it's kind of along uh, the lines of a backpacking first aid kit. If you go to the store and look at such a kit, they look pretty presentable and in fact they look pretty impressive. Um, you know as you see them hanging there on the store shelves, um, there are some ones that are actually not too bad and one of those brands would be Adventure Medical Kits. I think they do a pretty good job of putting stuff together. However, I find that most kits, uh, including this one that I'm holding here, are kind of lacking when it comes to medium-sized first aid emergencies. The kind that I myself have encountered in the woods and in remote areas. Either with my buddies, That's myself, stuff, That's this right. real, little tiny kit here just me. can't uh, address. Sure enough, now this one I've kind of supplemented with some items. I'm not really going to go into it. But what you see in a store-bought first aid kit is a lot of cold and sinus stuff, maybe a couple aspirin, band-aids, you might have a little roll of gauze like this, some tape, and that's it. Again, for a minor cut, minor abrasion, something like that, the kit's fine. And actually, I have hiked with this kit before several times. And for the size and weight that it represents, it handles a fair amount. Generally, though, I make my own first aid kits. Does that come as a surprise to anybody? <laughs> Shouldn't. Here is just such a kit, and I'm going to review it now. And actually, I just put it together tonight. I have several of these types of kits in various systems that I have. I didn't want to go and yank those out. Um, and that kind of gets to a, a, an item that I want to address right now. And uh, this might be a multi-part video because there's a lot to talk about, maybe a little bit of philosophy when it comes to first aid kits, and I'll discuss it. Again, it's my perspective, what's worked for me, 
your mileage may vary. One of the elements is you've got to have your first aid kit ready. You remember how I talked about if you're a concealed carry permit holder carrying your gun all the time? Same type of concept. You need to have your first aid kit ready to rock and roll wherever you go. You know, if you decide to go out and shoot some rounds with your buddies, I hey, rock on, practices. man. You see me doing so, that on, on that. film with you guys right, or so, on video uh, with you guys a lot, and it's fun. But I never go out either with myself uh, not having a first aid kit or someone in my party has uh, one. And I'll tell you what, we discussed that too. Dude, do you have the first aid kit? You know, I'll talk to my buddy, uh, sadly missing. He's really Tyler's big on that ready. too. Say, do you have one? If not, Fire I'm carrying. It's all you. So either one of us or someone else in our party will have a first aid kit, this preferably a level man. two with it's us when we're in a group situation. However, and I'm going to talk about the POU for this level one kit. A lot of times your weight is going to be very limited. So will be your space. Um, when I backpack deep into the high altitude areas of the United States, in my pack, as you've seen from my extended stay backpacking videos, uh, it weighs a lot uh, because I'm taking a lot. And with all the weight I take, I have a lot of capabilities, as you've seen. For you, uh, look at the annotation there for that video. If you want to look at my entire backpacking system, extended stay. Excuse me. <clears throat> now, in that in that type of system, and actually in any weight critical system, um, I cannot just take the kitchen sink when it comes to first aid. Uh, I've got to minimize my weight. I have to minimize my bulk. That's where a level one first aid kit, according to me, comes into play. And I want it to be slim. Uh, and compact and lightweight. This one weighs five and a half ounces and I'm going to show you all the things that I put in it. Let's get going. First off, let me lower this tripod here just for a sec. Sorry for the bouncing. What is your priority when it comes to first aid? For me, in my experience, when I've been in the out of doors, it's bleeding. Someone has cut themselves, you're going to have a cut. It might be severe and you are a long ways away from uh, a doctor or being able to get to that, that person to an infirmary or an emergency room. Guess what? It's up to you. you got to handle it. And many times, guess what? I have hiked, like I said, in uh, very high altitude areas, and this is the only first aid I have with me just for weight constraints. Again, I can't take a, four, you know, a five pound first aid kit with me. So with that in mind, and that is my primary consideration, yes, even with a level one first aid kit, I want to have a way to stop the bleeding of my buddies or myself. And that's going to be critical. And this is where my kit blows away those store-bought kits. Now, I did see it the other day that Adventure Medical Kits has what they call a trauma kit. You can see it there in pictures. And I read the back of that trauma kit and to be honest I wasn't overly impressed with the stuff it has in it it's mostly trauma and name only back to this kit and I've taken all the items out of it to me a trauma kit is something that you can handle a, a pretty serious bleeding situation and that's going to be critical to perhaps say that person's limb maybe they're alive depending on what it is as such I stock yes even my level one kits with what are called surge pads. These are by Johnson & Johnson. There's various manufacturers that you can get, I think. Oh, what's this one? No, it's still Johnson & Johnson. What it is is a thick blood absorbent dressing. They call them surgical pads because supposedly they're using them in surgery to do just that, soak up blood. You need a way to do just that. And I will tell you some stories along the lines um, that are pretty serious in nature when I... Uh, uh, incidents I came upon when I do my level 2 kit review. Another way, these are expensive though, I want to tell you all these surgical pads and these, this one is kind of along the same lines, it's called a topper, that's just Johnson & Johnson's name, but both are going to serve the same purpose and that is to soak up blood. Now, these are expensive. If you don't want to spend the money and you can take some extra bulk and get ready to laugh, you can use maxi pads. That's right, feminine hygiene products. This is just such one. I do believe they are sterile for the most part, and they're packaged in plastic, and they're thick. You can, these are the biggest ones I could find. Dude, do you remember when they used to make, not that I've, I've been in the market for maxi pads, they used to make those really huge ones 
Where did those go? I was trying to find one. And the reason I was is because I wanted an economical way to get some blood soakers in my kits, especially a level 2 kit. But one reason I opted to buy these and go ahead and spend the extra money is because of the compactness. If you were to compare those against the maxi pads, and I know you guys are laughing, but remember this is a serious topic. Your buddy's bleeding, possibly bleeding to death. Um, yeah, you can use your jacket or whatever you have with you, but there's nothing like a good first aid kit to get the thing under control. That's why I opted for these, though. They're flatter. Word of warning. I do not put these directly on a bleed or, uh, let's say, a, a cut, whether it's bad or whatever, because the blood's natural tendency to coagulate is immediately going to start. When you have to change the dressing, especially if you decide, you know what, the cut's really not that bad, we're going to go ahead and stay up there uh, in the high mountain areas and just tough it out, you're going to have to do some dressing changes while you're up there. When you try to take a gauze pad off a wound, it's going to rip that coagulated blood off, probably some tissue with it, and it's going to start bleeding all over again and probably um, create a big old mess, and it's not good. That's why, yes, even in a level one kit, I have what are called non-adhering or adaptic bandages as well. This is another brand, that's the one I was trying to think of, is Swift. And they are a little bit less expensive. Here's a Kindle one. So don't get wrapped up on the brand of bandages. But uh, this is a non-adherent bandage. As you can see, a non-adherent dressing, they call it. It's called a Telfa. And if you guys remember uh, from Band-Aids, that's what Band-Aids have on them. It, it's a substance that does not stick to the wound. So as it dries, if you need to take this off of the wound, it's not going to rip that blood and tissue up, and you can do a dressing exchange without causing a lot of pain. So I try to put this Telfa underneath a sponge, and then that way I have a system that I can change out, uh, you know, I don't know, 8 hours, 12 hours from then if I have to. Now along with this, and in my level 1 kit, I also have tape because you're going to have to have a way to affix that on the wound site. And the tape I really like, and I don't have the spool here, it's perforated medical tape. And what it is, let me lower the tripod a little bit more, sorry, is that it breathes. This is not duct tape. It is specifically made for bandaging uh, band or bandages onto limbs and stuff, like your arm, your leg. And it's perforated so it breathes. What I did is took a hotel key, just cut a piece of plastic out, and wrapped that tape around to, again, fit into my very compact level one kit. And that's about the amount of tape that I'm going to take with me up there. Remember, all this is weight critical. This is not the only thing we're taking when we go backpacking. So every, I'm trying to minimize weight and bulk. And it gets to that mobility side of the equation where we may not have a huge capability with us, but at least we have something. And this kit's going to handle the primary thing that I think uh, I see up there, and that's bleeding. So there's the surge of pads, and this is like the thinner version of it. It's called a topper by Johnson & Johnson. Now, if it's not a big bleeder, we can go directly to the Telfa bandages and just put these on using our medical tape. That's another way to do it. Prior to dressing a wound, though, I like to clean it out. And as it bleeds, it's automatically automatically going to flush out to a degree. However, I want to help the process and sterilize it as best I can, especially if it, the cut was produced by something that wasn't sterile, that was bad, and introduced a lot of infectious germs in there. And that's where we get into this system that I've come up with. Nope, never seen anywhere else. I just found these. These are actually called transport tubes and they are designed to transport laboratory substances in a completely waterproof and airtight fashion. These are actually two transport tubes taped um, bottom to bottom and the reason I did that is because it creates a long tube that rides nicely in this package and I'll tell you about this envelope here in a second and it rides just like so. That way it doesn't drop down in between the bandages and create more bulk in my system. And by the way, this is a first aid kit that can fit inside a BDU pocket. So what do I have in these transport tubes? Well, back to disinfection, one is peroxide, hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide. And no, I don't have a ton of it. You can see the container size. I forget the mills that this thing has. I don't know if it's marked. 
it isn't. On the other side, I have iodine, uh, betadine to be exact. The co same kind of thing uh, that surgeons use to disinfect the area they're going to cut open. So two awesome disinfectants. Um, no, I wouldn't pour it into a deep cut. I'm talking more topical. And also I could sterilize uh, some, you know, a tool if I had to with this as well. And this doesn't weigh a lot. I mean, this amount of fluid is packable in my opinion. And it does wonders to flush out a cut or wound. And then after cleaning it up, I can go ahead and bandage it. Additionally, I have these small um, waterproof bags inside my level one first aid kit. And by the way, this is the brand. I get them at a drugstore. I think Walgreens has these. Uh, they're meant for crafts, actually, but they're tiny 3 by 5 inch craft bags, Ziploc bags, and they're awesome for organizing what you have in your first aid kit. And you do want it organized. And the reason I say that, again, speaking from experience, is because when you break into this thing, it's going to be pretty much time critical. There's going to be someone waiting on you, maybe yourself, that's bleeding, and you don't want to mess around and be digging for stuff. Have it very organized. This is my another uh, mini pouch that I have, and in here I have alcohol swabs. At times I have iodine swabs that have that same substance on them impregnated in the swab. I'm out right now, so there's none in this pouch. Usually you'll see about three or four of those riding in this smaller pouch. There's a single edge razor blade. If I have to cut some uh, tissue off, uh, you just never know what you're going to be faced with. It's ha nice to have a fresh razor sharp blade, stainless steel variety, get a high quality one and there it rides ready for use. Then a variety of band-aids and thankfully this will probably be your most access thing in your first aid kit is band-aid use. You're going to have people in your party snick and cut themselves and this will probably be able to bandage up I don't know 90 percent of what you're going to see out there and that's a good thing. However if it goes bigger then you got to be prepared. This is another adhesive bandage. It has a non-adherent side on it, Telfa type, and you don't have to fool around with taping it if you don't want to. So this is another option. I've included a couple of these in, different brands. I've got this Next Care brand, and I don't even know what brand this is. You can buy all most of this stuff at Walmart or a large, well-stocked department store. Um, none of it's cheap, though. First aid supplies are just expensive. Um, here's some not some adherent pads and this is a kind of along the bleeder lines these are smaller these are going to be the three inch square here's a four inch square and then again with these I would pair them with the non-adherent dressing on against the wound and then I'd wrap it notice how many I have um, and this is where my kit blows away any store-bought kit if even that trauma kit you saw by medical emergency kits or whatever that brand is um, adventure medical kits, I'm sorry. They don't have a lot of bandages. Pretty much two is all you're going to get. But this is set up for you know a backpacking trip and I need to have some depth even in a level one kit that you know I can do dressing exchanges with if I have to. Here's some cotton swabs in a very small bag. Uh, I think these are like the two inch bags in the same brand. And then I packed, believe it or not, there's eight cotton swabs in there packed. I squoze the air out of it. And that's a great way to, uh, to apply your iodine if you have to and also your peroxide. Great fire starter, too, if you don't have anything else. And, yeah, your, fire, your first aid kit can function in a survival mode as well. Something I'm now adding to my level one kits, at least for the ones that I will go into the backcountry with, are sutures. And these are medical sutures designed to sew up wounds. And the reason I'm including these is because, again, I think um, if we are really far in, sometimes I've been, I don't know, 20 miles in the backcountry, um, my first objective would be to get out. But if you can't get out and it's a really bad cut and there's a lot of bleeding going on and you need to close that wound, guess what? it might be up to you to do that and I think a pre-sealed suture is the way to go. I'm not the medical expert but I can tell you that I've handled some pretty gnarly cuts some pretty gnarly first aid emergencies and that's why I pack what I pack because of what I've seen and what I've personally had to handle when no one else would. Uh, so guess what? Sutures ride in my level one kit whenever I can. 
Now there's different sizes, there's different types. You have silk, you got cat gut, I don't know, all the different types. My son, Tactical Doodle, is actually the medical expert. And he knows about this stuff uh, actually in depth. He's a certified EMT in that, and he's getting more certifications, so that's cool. Sutures. Here's the medications that I take, and it will depend on what your needs are. But I would say most people would like to have a variety of Advil. You can see I have Advil there. I have some Tylenol. They're really powerful stuff. I mean, store-bought variety, 500 milligrams. <coughs> Excuse me. A little pink pill pills are antacid. Not really a first aid emergency. It's a comfort item. And yeah, it goes in my first aid kit. Word to the wise. When you put in little pills like this that are unmarked, you put on a little label right here. And all you have to say is what I say here. Small pink or antacid. Because someone, maybe not you, will be using your first aid kit. They don't know what you have. I didn't do it for the Tylenol or the Advil because I didn't have to. It's right there. So that's just uh, something to think about. And guess what? I'm going to do this in a part one. So i got to wrap it up. So... You might want to include in there Lopramide, that's anti-diarrhea meds. That's something very nice to have up with you in the out of doors. There are some natural remedies that you can do to prevent diarrhea, but you can get dehydrated pretty easily up there, and it's a wise thing to have. So I'm going to put some Lopramide in this kit, and that'll be pretty much all. Uh, pills are a little bit heavy, so you can't take a ton with you. I think the selection I have there, uh, other than not having the Lopramide, the anti-diarrhea med, not too bad. All right, out of time already. Let me just say that I wrap all of this up, as you saw in the beginning of the video, in this very high-quality document envelope. It's a military variety. I'm going to show you the national stock number on it because I actually had to do a Google search on it because I saw these envelopes, and they are the bomb. They're made out of mylar, thick mylar. They won't leak. They won't tear, and they make perfect first aid pouches. So that's it. Level 1 medical kit, subject to change. I've taken this with me many times in out of doors. I always have at least a level 1 with me. And versus the store-bought kits, like this Adventure Medical Kits, uh, it pretty much rocks. There's a lot of other things you could put in it. If you have the capability and size and weight and your system can take it, go ahead and flush it out. You might want needles. You might want some scissors to fit in there. It just depends. Those are things I don't include in my level 1 because I have them and other multi-tools or pocket knives that I have with me. So I don't like duplicating the weight and the bulk in a level one. This is nothing fancy. That's your introduction. Oh, I forgot to tell you one thing. Here it is. One other thing, Neosporin, that's also in a tiny transport tube. See that? I don't take a whole tube with me, and that's a toothpick that you can get in there and access it and spread it, and you can disinfect that toothpick with a alcohol swab. I know it's not absolutely disinfected, but trust me dudes, up in the woods, it's pretty clean. Alright, for realsies now, I'm out of here. This is Nothing Fancy with a level one medical kit review. Hope it helped. Always have it with you when you do your adventure. We'll see you. Thanks for the good ratings and for tuning in. Coming back at you soon.